From the Cleveland State University Convocation Center, the Kansas City Attack and the Cleveland Crunch hook up in Game 4 of the NPSL Finals. Let's take a look at what happened in the first three games. This year's finals opened in Kansas City, and the Attack made the most of their home field, breaking open an 11-all halftime tie with nine straight points to put a lock on. Second-year man Brian Lofton went wild with five goals and 12 points on the way. was somewhat similar. KC held a slim halftime edge, but had to work a little harder after Cleveland pried open a three-point lead. Ryan Haynes started and ended a six-point run that put the attack ahead for good. The series moved to Cleveland for game three, and the crunch flexed their home field muscles, rocketing out to a 12-0 lead for the victory. Henry Gutierrez and Hector Marin had 10 points apiece. Hi, everybody. I'm Ed Vistanik. Welcome into Game 4 of the 96 NPSL Finals. No doubt about it, when these two teams meet in the playoffs, home field is gold. They hooked up in the 1993 championship. Kansas City won that series in five games, and each game was won by the home team. Here were three games in, and the same scenario has developed with each team holding serve at home. My broadcast partner is Art Kramer, and Art, not only did the Crunch win on their home field, they won big. Well, in the 1996 playoffs, Kansas City owns a 7-3 and three record, and all three losses have been by big margin. They've been blowouts, as you see here, twice in St. Louis, once in Cleveland. But guess what? Every time they've lost, they've come back the next night and have won the next game. Now, a couple of things about Game 3 stick out. One is the Crunch shot out to a 12-0 lead. The other thing is Kansas City took a lot of penalties, and the Crunch made them pay. Well, Kansas City was playing without their defensive captain and leader, Jim Schwab. And tonight, Schwab is going to be back in the starting lineup. He had a pulled hamstring, but he's the guy that really orchestrates their defense, makes sure they don't take any silly penalties. Look for Kansas City had to come out with a spirited defensive effort here in Game 4. Well, here are the uh, starters for the Kansas City attack as we go into Game 4. Brett Phillips will get another start in goal. Nate Hauser and Jim Schwab defensively. The speed of Wes Wade with Gordon Hunyak and Lee Tashantred up front. Familiar faces in the Cleveland starting lineup. Otto Orff in goal. Oscar Dragicevic with Scott Schweitzer defensively. Tommy Tanner, Henry Gutierrez, and Hector Marinero up front. You're looking at the Cleveland State University Convocation Center, the home of the Cleveland Crunch. With us tonight, down on the floor, Greg Macy had a chance to talk to both coaches prior to tonight's action with Bruce Miller before the game and he said the reason they lost games one and two was because they tried to challenge goalkeeper for Kansas City Brett Phillips 101 and Phillips came up with all the big saves well, when game three the game they won they had a lot better ball movement and they were able to beat Brett Phillips in those one-on-one -on -one situations on the other hand Kansas City has come out with a much different attitude in this game I thought the Zoran Savick it was very matter of fact said we know what we've got to do to win this game we've got to challenge Cleveland we've got to make them break a little bit better on the counterattack and beat them on the counterattack and adjust to the smaller field. I think if the difference in this game is an attitude, Kansas City will have a much different approach to game number four. Ed? Thanks a lot, Greg. Uh, tonight's officials are Tom Landy and Mike Kennedy along with Mark Del Coral in the box, and we're just about set to go. And Ed, did you see the look on Zoran Savick's face? He definitely has his game face on here for game number four. And it's showtime. Kansas City in blue attacking left to right. The uh, Crunch Cleveland in white. The Shantred in the corner. Lee has 11 assists and leads the attack in that category during the playoffs. Wes Wade. Honyak, great ball movement. Just wide to Shantred, making the back stick run. And the Crunch will come forward for their first attack of game four. Into the corner, Henry Gutierrez. What a night he had in game three. Five goals and ten points. Marinero also with ten points. And uh, Doug Miller, who we'll see a bit later on, with seven. Lots of guys putting up big numbers in game three. This is Wes Wade. Wade was uh, sent to play defensively when Jim Schwab got hurt in game two. And Ed, in all three of the games, it's taken 20 points. The winner has scored 20 points. I don't look for that to happen tonight. I think it's going to be much tighter defensively. Cleveland knows that if they can hold Kansas City to right around 12 points, they have a good chance to win the game. Kansas City was number one in the league defensively. Look for them to get back to doing a lot of the things they did during the regular season. 
and I think 15 points may win this game here tonight. Otto Orff, six and three in the playoffs with a 16.47 points against. There's Doug Miller. He's playing with a really bad left knee. He's going to have surgery after the uh, final series is over. Cartilage, ligament damage. He's really gutting it out. It didn't show in game three as he came through with four goals. In fact, that whole Cleveland second line of Dasoski, Miller, Tima in the back with Hanser and Carbonera played exceptionally well in game three. Eddie Carmine slips it up ahead to Jeff Rogers. Play a little catch and they'll go back to Brett Phillips. One timer over the head of Brian Haynes and Glenn Carbonera with a noggin on that one. Headers for Haynes. Some trouble hooking up there and Otto Orff will scoop it up. Otto throws long. He likes playing in this building. Doesn't have to heave it as far as they do in Kansas City. There's about a 17-foot difference between the two buildings. West Wade, Honyak on it, hands are back defensively. The follow-up, Nate Hauser, he'll slide it to Jeff Rogers. Rogers with 14 points in the playoffs. Now over to Jim Schwab, and I'm sure that hamstring isn't at 100%, probably somewhere in the 60% range. I mean, it looked like somebody shot him in that leg when he went down. And you see this game a little bit slower pace as we come at the start. Look out, Honyak. With the fake, slid it across. Or with the stop, hands are on the line to take it away in one composure by the rookie. Well, a good job by hands with that time. The young rookie to keep this game scoreless. Kansas City's going to have a free kick. And watch again, hands are on the goal line, taking that ball. And as you said, Ed, showed great composure to take that ball out of there. Jim Schwab to Wes Wade. Uh, Prior to these teams lining up for this free kick, Glenn Carbonaro and Gordon Hunyak were having words, so we'll watch that. Long ball, and Miller will try to catch up to it. It will hop over the glass, and that'll give Kansas City a free kick down here at the attack line. Doug Miller told me, you know, guys I used to be able to run by and just blow by, I'm going as fast as I can. I'm moving my legs to their ultimate, and I'm not catching anybody. Well, the key for Miller is to be opportunistic. He scored a number of his goals the other night inside the box he needs to scrap around in the box and try to collect some garbage and he finished well in game three jim schwab drilled it off marinero and hector protecting himself almost scored in his own goal tanner coming out of a fray he got clipped there is a foul let's watch otto who's had a great playoff and this shot actually deflected off marinero and otto showed good reaction to make that save Ed, both these teams in the playoffs have been outscored in the first quarter. Cleveland 42 to 38, and Kansas City, surprisingly, has been outscored 41 to 28 so far in these playoffs. Schwab stepped in nicely to deny Marinero. Then his play up field misses to Shantrit by a good margin. This is Gutierrez. Henry, a two-time ACC Player of the Year at North Carolina State. He spent some time in France playing soccer there. Marinero, one time, or partially blocked by Carmine, and Phillips able to answer. You mentioned Gutierrez has really come to life in these playoffs. He's got 39 points in 10 games. Only had seven points in six games last year in last year's playoffs, so really learned something last year in the playoffs. And has really come through this year for the Crunch. Rogers tries to play at top of the box, the Crunch triple team, and get it back to Orp. Otto, a two-time All-Star. He actually made his uh, All-Star debut in his hometown of Buffalo two seasons ago. We saw Otto score a goal from just over midline in game two, and he's coming up dangerously close for Kansas City, where they need to really be concerned about closing him up not only a goal art but a three-point goal for Otto and he's saying put me in as the sixth attacker I could do it Gutierrez in the corner with Hauser all over him Henry very strong for his size he's only 5'8 150 but he is a load to hold here is Wade slipped it off to Hauser one time Honyak in the corner cut it back the toe of Schweitzer, the left foot up to Shantrin and Orff, able to stand his ground. Great attack for Kansas City. Yeah, good work in the attack for Kansas City. A nice one-touch pass by Hauser, and then they were looking for him on the pass back, but Schweitzer got his toe in there, and then to Shantrin, followed up with a bomb of a left foot that Otto just did get down and make the save. And both these goalkeepers have been worked hard in the first three games, and 
both have played well despite having high points against average. Otto had 12 assists in the playoffs last year. And you'll see him creep up again to the half line as Kansas City will drop their defense back to their yellow line and beyond. Great quickness from Pashantra. Took it off a of Hanser's foot and Hanser fouled him. And had Zoran Savic, the coach of Kansas City, doing a very smart thing here in the early going. Remember, they fell behind 12-0 in game three. Wants to make sure they're gonna slow the pace down, really stay in this game, and not let things get away from them like they did in game three in the first quarter. Well, in game three, the first goal was scored at the 5.07 mark. We're just beyond that. Good look at what Otto Orff sees coming up the floor. He has an opening. Will he tee it up? No, play into the corner. Tanner took it down. And watch Kansas City when we see that camera angle again. They will not give you anything through the middle of the field. Tanner along the boards and Phillips right where he needed to be. Here comes Eddie Carmine with space across the cover. Rogers! Oh, he missed it. And he's holding his head. He knows. We'll take a break. No score in game four. Adversity at Art Kramer back at Cleveland State University. There's the storyline in the first quarter. And boy, did Rogers miss an opportunity moments ago. Well, I think two of the big keys for Kansas City in this game, Ed, are to finish their chances. They must do that. But also, how quickly they get back in transition from offense to defense. Watch when Kansas City loses the ball in the attacking zone. How quickly they get back with all five men to eliminate that Cleveland counterattack, which is so potent. Tom Tanner hit Goran Hunyak from behind. The foul is called at midfield, and Kansas City will put it back in play. West Wade playing in his 104th consecutive game into Hunyak. He lost the ball momentarily. Back after it, Wade follows up. He missed wide. Gutierrez will take that off the glass. The Chantret caught him. Nice move there. Gaining space. Marinero off the boards. On the give and go, Gutierrez still with the Chantret hanging all over him. Hart talked about that recovery run. Henry really looks sharp on the ball. I love the way he plays with his back to the goal. Number 10 in white, Gutierrez. Cognac in the midfield. He had four goals in game two. Goran with 33 points in the playoffs. There's a look at Henry Gutierrez from Hoboken, New Jersey. A lot of New Jersey boys. Foul against the crunch. A lot of North Carolina State boys on the Cleveland crunch roster Kevin Ketters will start it big game for Ketters in game one eight points but that was overshadowed by the work of Brian Lofton who we have not seen in this game so far Rogers in a crowd or scoops it up a real testimony to the depth of Kansas City as you mentioned haven't seen Lofton the guy that scored five goals and was the real hero of game one Zoran Savic has a multitude of players. He's got, you see Lofton right there with Greg Veach next to him. Veach came on in game three and scored a goal late. Marinero had an opening, but uh, the angle was bad. Look out, Kragisevich, he can hit it from there. It was blocked at the defense. Todd Dusoski creating some commotion. There he goes into the corner. One timer missed it wide. It'll come onto the foot of Kevin Ketters, who has to hold off Tanner and get it upfield. Nice move by Rogers. He got him some space, but Schweitzer was tugging at him in the foul call. Take another look to Soski, the young 19-year-old rookie. Just misses wide. Todd, the midfielder, he got an opportunity to play early on when Henry, Henry Gutierrez was out with a broken foot. Cleveland with a slight edge in shots to this point. His brother, Troy, got in 20 games. They're twins, and uh, he's more of a defensive player. Plays on the back line. One touch pass from Brian Haynes. Schweitzer with a jump kick. That's going to be over and back, and Otto had to do some work. The series continues in Kansas City for Game 5, April 29th. It'll be on air, 1.30 a.m. Brian Haynes, he missed it wide with the right foot. Hauser put it in front of goal, slapped out by Orff. Here comes Hanser, the rookie from Canada. Hanser plays it ahead. It got clipped by Kansas City, and Dasaski never caught up to it. Nate Hauser holds off Hanser. Great play there by Dragicevic. Miller with space, played it in to the opening, but... 
Nate Hauser read that run from Chris Hanser. Radicevich stepped in front. Here comes Miller with space to use. Tries to get it around Haynes. Tracks it down in the near corner. A double team from Wade. And he came very, away with the rock. Very nice defensive work that time by Kansas City. You saw Wade come in on the double team, but always making sure he has one eye on the defender that he just left. The Shantrit played for Wade. Hanser cuts him off. It hits a crowd in front. It's out. They're going to call it off. One guy's call it off. Pima. And we'll find out when we come back. We've got a break. Still no score in the first quarter. Time left in the first quarter. Well, they uh, gave the ball to Cleveland. Tough call for the officials to make. It hit a crowd in front. One guy was pointing one way. The other guy, the other. Uh-oh, look out. I'm sure Otto didn't want to get himself in that situation. The last man trying to take on Hunyak. And he was fortunate Hunyak didn't get a little toe poke in there. And you see Otto, Hunyak closes him up just nudges him enough to get the foul call. Crunch after the restart. Shot by Carbonara block. Glenn always comes up with some beauty haircuts. A foul and a tripping penalty will be called against Tom Tanner. So that will give the Kansas City attack a shootout and a power play opportunity. Well, in game three, there were six penalties called and five of them were against Kansas City. And Kansas City gets the benefit of this early call, a tripping penalty against Tommy Tanner. And Kansas City and Eloy Salgado will be taking the shootout to try to, to take an early lead. Five seconds to score. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Otto Orff. It's worth a point. Salgado with 16 of 24 on shootouts during the season. He likes to take one touch and then go to the goalie's right. Yeah. Stop. I think the first touch by Salgado a little weighty. Ed, you're exactly right. Played that first touch out a little bit too far. And I really believe he wanted to go to Otto's right, but because of the poor first touch, too far, had to go to the left, and Otto stuck that left hand out. So to the power play, the attack goes. They are four of nine in the playoffs with a man up. Brian Hayes with a rocket. Oh, man. Otto's going to shake off some cobwebs from that one. Well, we said both goalies will be tested, and Otto was up to that test with a great save on Haynes off that restart. Get him some catcher's gear or some goalie, hockey goalie equipment. Wow, was this struck. Because Haynes possesses one of the hardest shots in the league, and you see in slow motion right there, Otto reacted beautifully. And a goal by Ketters. A one-point goal almost from the exact same spot that Brian Haynes hit it. That might have been a three-pointer had the teams been at even strength, but it's worth only one point in Kansas City with first blood. Well, let's take another look. Off the restart, Ketters just a one-time ball, and I believe Otto may have been screened. The attack out to a one-nothing lead. Kevin Ketters leads the attack in scoring during the playoffs. He led him during the regular season, give him 35 points now, and that was his first one-point goal of the playoffs. It comes at 9.52. And after that great stop that Otto made on Haynes, I can't help but think that he was partially screened on that shot because that ball was right down the middle. Scott Schweitzer, an all-star this year. Gutierrez will post. He's got blue shirts all around him. Marinero nipped it away from Wade, and here comes Tanner, left side again. Swap. Play the boards. Marinero just had it scoot on by. Boy, those two guys were on the exact same page on that attack. Here comes Schweitzer, one-timer. Deflected by Wade. Schweitzer got it back early ball. Marinero holds off Rodgers. We have not seen Zorn Carriage yet in this game for the crunch. Long throw by Phillips. Good stat there for the Kansas City attack. They haven't lost when they draw first blood. In the playoffs, Kansas City 5-0. Brian Lofton on for his first shift. There's the guy who had a sensational game. On a giveaway, Tanner Marinero is blocked at the defense. Looking for a handball, no call. Nate Hauser with the big stop. Oh, that was definitely a close call. Hector certainly thought it was a handball. But it was a giveaway by Kansas City in their own zone. And you see 
Hauser stick out that right arm, and I believe Kansas City got away with one there, but Kansas City fortunate as they turn the ball over in their own zone. Uh, cheeky little deflection from the Crunch All-Star. Nate Hauser doing what he had to do to keep the Crunch off the score sheet. Still 1-0 Kansas City. Swab tracks it down. Hunyak had to get up high to possess the Shantrick. And really had a big difference than what we saw in game three. Opening for Ketters. Cleveland jumping out to a 12-0 lead. And I'm sure Coach Zoran Savic is pleased with his defensive effort. And it doesn't hurt to have their captain Schwab back in the lineup. I'm surprised Cleveland hasn't gone at Schwab a little bit more 1v1. And they brought Zoran Carriage on the floor for his first shift. Slide tackle from the Cowboy. He lost it. Hunyak one time. And Rodgers won't be able to catch up to it. The big Chris Hanser got in front. There's Zoran Carriage taking a regular shift. Not wearing that big bulky brace he had in the first three games. Just a sleeve on that right knee. Miller tries to break through. That got busted up. But that's twice now that Cleveland forwards have dished the ball off when they had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Schwab. Let's see right here if Carrick doesn't try to take him on, considering he has that bad knee. Left foot, Phillips knocked it down. Carrick carries on. The ball popped onto the foot of Carmine, and he cleared it back to the crunch end. And watch again. You know the guy's got a bad left hamstring, and that time Zoran takes him off the dribble. Just couldn't find the corner. No, in, in addition to Zoran's knee hurt, and I know he wasn't happy with the brace he had to wear. Carmine walked around Marinero, now turns to go to left. But Wade blocked it. Oh, Wade had to stretch full out. Couldn't get it in the correct direction. Marinero slid it into space. Read beautifully by... And here's Haynes, the counter for the attack. Wade moving against Carbonara. Those two were teammates in San Diego a few seasons back. Haynes and Marinero, a couple of all-stars. Haynes thought somebody in a blue shirt was there. There was not. Hector misread no. Zoran's run. Kansas City was fortunate, Ed, because they had three players square across the top of the box. And Cleveland had the numbers had they executed a quality pass there out of the back. Brett Phillips, a two-time player of the month in the NPSL. He put up some spectacular numbers during the regular season. Going undefeated in two different months. Eloy Salgado and Tim Tima, the old vet Tima, comes away with it. Plays it ahead. Gutierrez in a race. Hauser won it. Nice ball from Nate Hauser. Uh, Kansas City played a 4-1 game in the National Division Finals against St. Louis. That was uh, game three. Five points in an NBSL game. That is amazing. And right now, Kansas City locking it down defensively. Well, Kansas City's comfortable with playing at any tempo you want to play at. If you want to try to run and gun, Zoran Savic feels that he has about nine guys that can put the ball in the back of the net. And if you want to slow it up, they're more than obliged to slow it up with you and play this type of game as well. Uh, just to enhance that point, there were eight guys on Kansas City's roster that scored 70 points or more. Kevin Ketters and Goran Hunyak leading the way each with over 100, but seven guys, or eight guys, that put up over 70 points. Late in the first quarter, here, here comes, comes Otto Orr. Played it ahead, Marinero fighting with Schwab. The bicycle kick, he scores! Oh, baby! Well, we've seen Hector score great goals before, and this is just one more great goal by Hector Marinero, and watch Otto play it forward to Hector. We talked about Kansas City wanting to force him to the outside. This time they let him play it down the middle. Schwab's marking him. Tell you what, very close to being a dangerous play, but a beautiful bicycle kick. 
by Marinero to give Cleveland a 2-1 lead four seconds before the end of the first quarter. Art, to me, not only was it amazing that he biked it, but he had to move a couple of steps to his right and hold off a mark before he did it. Hector Marinero ties an NPSL record for 35 goals in the playoffs and puts the crunch ahead 2-1 to one after one. We're back in Cleveland, the Crunch with a 2-1 lead, and uh, Greg Mace was down on the floor for a little insight. Well, before that goal by Hector Marinaro, the Cleveland bunch was incredibly frustrated. Zoran Karic was telling his team to wake up. Tommy Tanner threw a big cup of water up against the glass, and the goal by Hector certainly woke them up. But Bruce Miller said, look, we're still giving Kansas City far too many opportunities. At the end of the first quarter the last time, they had an 8-0 lead. Now they're only up 2-1. Ed? All right, thanks a lot, Greg. Art, that, that was a goal that almost wasn't a goal. Well, let's take another look and watch the Kansas City defender, Kevin Ketters, come from the left side of your screen. And if he sticks his head in here, it's a dangerous play, but he'll stick his hand in there instead of sticking his head in. And I was a little confused as to why he did that, but had he stuck his head in there, well, could have been called a dangerous play, but as it is, Hector scores a great goal. Kansas City didn't have much argument on the play. How many times have we seen him do that in this building? Here comes the Cowboy, Dragicevic! Oh, big save by Phillips. The ball just a little bit behind Gutierrez, but Oscar Dragicevic can bring the fall, ball forward. A foul by Deshantred. He took down Marinero, and the two help one another up. See the foul again. Wade tries to slip in. Oh, this is the initial shot, and Phillips comes up with a dandy save. The one thing Greg Mace told us in the opening was they didn't want to challenge him one-on-one, -on -one, wanted to make that extra pass. The one thing I noticed is Phillips has been outstanding on low balls. He has come up with every save down low. Eddie Carmine paid for that block, and he leads the attack in blocks, led them during the regular season. But all the scouting reports on Brett Phillips is he's a great stand-up goalie, but he's been sprawling all over the turf in the first three games. And he's shown he can get down and make those low saves. There's Kevin Ketters, fifth-year player at a Brockhurst College. Brian Haynes now in the corner with Fugisevich. Schweitzer, Ketters tried to play quickly to Rodgers, but that got busted up. Here come the crunch. It'll be over and back as it hit Ketters and bounced into the... And now third. a delay a game penalty. As you saw, Hauser just kicked that ball up into the crowd right in front of Mike Kennedy, the official, and that's going to be two minutes. And Cleveland, who scored four power play goals in game three, is going to have another one here in game four. And watch again. The whistle has already gone at this time, and then Hauser just, for whatever reason, a young rookie mistake... Really no reason for that, and uh, Hauser may be just a little bit frustrated. Something I'm sure he wasn't thinking about when he did it. It's a delay of game penalty for Kansas City. There will be no shootout here. Well, if he wasn't thinking about it before, <laughs> he will be thinking about it when he steps off and has to face that man there, Zoran Savic. Savic, a two-time coach of the year. He was coach of the year last season. Marinero backs up. Crunch has been spectacular on the power play. Gutierrez has two power play goals to lead the table in the playoffs. The Crunch was four of six on the power play in game three. And you always have to be aware of Kansas City's man down unit with the speed of Wade up front. They can score shorthanded on you as well. Trigisevich stepped in the crunch 4v3 here with Carriage getting into the play, coming up the gut, right side Marinero, one-timer! Knocked aside by Phillips, Carriage took it down, they work a little magic out high. Carriage tried to slide it in, the left foot of Doug Miller. And how did that pass get through three players? Schwab played it upfield, Eddie Carmine there, Miller to uh, make it tough for him. Trigisevich got a noggin on it. Gutierrez and Carriage having a little trouble there. Here is Carriage, 16 assists in the playoffs. 
Cleveland is very patient on their power play. Even if they have to work close to the full two minutes before they get quality shots, they'll take it. Smart play there by Ketters. He knew he was racing against Carrots, who has had problems with the knee. So he tried to take him on, and Zorn got enough of his body. Nice work, Blue. Nice work. Once again, at game three, they had all those power, four power play goals, and they were one away from the record of five. There is Miller. He mishit it on the far side. Phillips will handle that easily. And Brett's thinking, why can't all the shots be struck like that? To Shantrick. He has position, and Dragicevic recovered just in the nick of time. Here comes Wade Ford. He walked around the tackle and scores! Short-handed goal by Wes Wade, a two-pointer. The attack go ahead, three to two. Well, what we say about being aware of Kansas City's man down unit as they strike here to give Kansas City the lead back at 3-2, to two, and it was Wes Wade and Tashantret, the two spark plugs up front as Cleveland, actually that was an over and back that would have helped Cleveland, but Wade makes a great steal and then puts it away with the left foot with Tashantret positioned perfectly in front. Wade with his second two-pointer of the playoffs, giving him 17 points. Tashantret picks up another assist. He's got 12 now in the playoffs, and Kansas City scores while the crunch is a man up. There's a morale booster, momentum builder. Hauser just out of the box, took it away. Here comes Tima ahead, cut it back, blocked by Schlapp. The battle in front, and Hauser will clear it upfield. Now a race. Brian Haynes can fly, nods it down on his way to goal. Played it weekly off the board. I just love the way Lee Deshantret plays for Kansas City. It's the type of guy that he's on the other team. Everybody hates him, but when he's on your team, you love the guy because of his work rate and enthusiasm, the way he goes about playing the game. He really sparks his team defensively, even though he's a forward with the high pressure he puts on the other team's defenders. Wes Wade, 98 points during the regular season. Out of Phoenix, Arizona. Ball played off the boards and a foul called against Kansas City. Well, we go from NPSL balls of fire to NHL fire on ice. As the NHL plays around in their first round, Grant Fuhr out for the St. Louis Blues, yet the Blues up 3-1. Wayne Gretzky trying to uh, win another cup, this time in St. Louis with Mike Keenan. Otto Orff won a championship with the Crunch back in 1994. Cleveland taking care of the St. Louis Ambush that season. Ambush came back and won last year's championship. Ah, dangerous ball from Gutierrez and Phillips. Hats off to him for staying with that screamer. And when the ball's coming that fast around the curve like that, you never know how that tendous ball will react. I don't know. Relax a little. Now for Gutierrez. He'll hold off Limniatis. Played into Marinero. Holds off Carmine. Carmine came away for Ketters. Ketters played into space. Early ball. It's a bit behind Rodgers, but he'll come forward. Tees up a three-pointer just over the bar. Gutierrez will track that down in midfield. Tries to turn Carmine around. He did, but he didn't get anywhere across. Dangerous ball. Ketter stepped in front. Phillips will take that spinning ball. Kansas City playing the low-pressure defense. I'm a little surprised that their forwards don't pinch in a little bit more around the midline. As Phillips having some trouble here in the back. Phillips thought he was a forward. And Marinero almost pinched one. But after the goal that Marinero scored with that ball laid through the middle of the field, Surprising they'll give that ball. Hector Marinero has the only crunch goal in the crunch trail at three to two. Otto Orff, the 32-year-old out of Elma, New York. His wife, Marty, celebrating a birthday. He's got a lot of supporters here in Cleveland. Neon sides you know now if there are real fans aren't they? they'd have their shirts off and painted on their bodies right right well Otto had a great season this year 29 and 9 
plays it ahead. He's got seven points in the playoffs. He assisted on Marinero's goal. Ball banging around, whacking away. Tanner didn't come up with a solid effort. And Haynes will play it down the floor. Well, those are the type of goals that Cleveland scored a lot of in game three with those goals in the box. And tonight, those goals aren't coming so easily for the crunch. To see Kansas City, that time it was Haynes, a forward, back playing defensively in his own box. Well, we haven't had anybody repeat in quite some time. Chicago, Detroit, Kansas City, Cleveland, and St. Louis as the Cubs been spread around. Well, Kansas City, Cleveland, and St. Louis have really been the elite teams in the league the last three years, and certainly a few other teams around the league have closed that gap this season. Milwaukee with a great season, and Buffalo and Baltimore. Harrods looking for the upper corner. Trevisovic on the rebound. Cassandra takes it there and nipped it ahead enough. But now Carrots with the left foot blocked at the defense. Trevisovic neatly took it down. The pressure from Wade. Schweitzer gets out of that. Played for Tanner. Turns to face. Tanner into Marinero. He played it for the Tanner on the give and go. Look at the four blue jerseys converging around Marinero when that ball was played in. As they are not going to let Hector turn him again. Brian Haynes. Perennial All-Star, Wade whacked it with the right, missed it wide. Hector for Tanner. Tanner slides it in for Carriage. Look at the three blue shirts, that, as Art's been telling you about, Kansas City defending en masse. Their, their play really starts with team defense. Well, that's what Coach Savick has said all year long. Our team and our game is built around defense. Tanner with the quick head fake. He shoots it just wide. Good inside out move that time by Tanner. He was taking on Jim Schwab there. Tanner has had his share of injuries over the course of his career. Actually blew out his knee in college, but came back from it. That's one of the things that general manager Al Miller really liked about Tommy Tanner was the fact that he comes back from injuries like that. Marinero. And take another look at some of the defense Kansas City's playing. The four blue jerseys all around Hector Marinero. Well, if you're going to pick a guy to surround, I'd say number 21 would, would be that guy. Well, Hector's already broken the points in a season in the playoffs. Did that in game three. He's now got 80 points for the playoffs breaking his own record of 74. Uh, bad first touch by Carbonara. He would have been able to key one up had he got it down quickly. Ketter's back to Phillips. Uh, he saw an opening and played Carmine. Carmine hits the yellow line quickly. Left footer across. Rogers played it in front of goal. And Tima cleared it. It springs a crunch counter. Hands are into space. Miller tracking it down across. It hits Schwab. Miller back on it. It's off of Schwab and into the crowd. The crunch Schwab is down. But not before he made a great defensive play to position himself perfectly. Kansas City had a chance down here. Yes, they did. It's the second time that Rodgers has missed at the far post. He missed once with the left foot in the first quarter. And now here with the right foot in the second. Rodgers has two game-winning goals in the playoffs. He's been a bit unlucky so far. A look at what Arf sees again right up the middle but nobody was checking to the ball there, so he dumped it into the corner. The back heel pass never made it to Miller. Good job that time by Limnitis to stay with his runner. Actually, it was Carmine in the back for Kansas City. There's Limnitis. Punyak back on it. Gorn hasn't seen a shift in quite some time. Here he is on his way to goal. He's got Orff down, played it back. Ketters looking for an opening. Miller ran into his own player, and Carmine got a right foot toward well, goal. That pass from Hunyak to Ketters was on his unprotected side. He had his left foot for the shot, but played it to the wrong side. Lemniotis, a Canadian national player with another strong tackle, wins the ball for Kansas City. Carmine, Hunyak, and Tima. Tima getting a physical and uh, fouled Gorin. Well, I... I said that 15 points would probably win this game, Ed. It looks like maybe 10 could win it at the pace we're going, but 
When you got guys like Team and Schwab in there in these big games, they can really look at Schwab getting over there, and he was able to force Marinero into a bit more of a hurried effort. Oh, a crunching tackle from Tashantran and Ketters on Tommy Tanner. Boy, he got it from both sides. Get ready. Here it comes. Ketters come in at Tashantran. Well, those guys weren't going to let Tanner get out of that closed space. Tanner will shake it off, and we'll give him a chance to do that. It's a 3-2 Kansas City lead. Edvison and Kennard Kramer back in Cleveland. Uh, a one-point Kansas City lead. Tommy Tanner being attended to on the crunch bench. By Manny Economos, the crunch trainer. He's been one of the, one of the busiest man, men in the playoffs for Cleveland as he's had to worry about Zoran, Miller, Schweitzer, and now Tanner. And we didn't mention, uh, mention Andy Schmetzer here. And uh, Schmetzer had his cheekbone broken in the Buffalo series by Mike D'Annunzio. And uh, talked to Andy before the game. He's still a little swollen, but he's got a couple of steel plates and a couple of screws in his left cheek area. Come on, boys. Come on. Or with space to come forward again. He's all the way at the half line. And the crowd becoming a little bit restless here. They want to see crunch soccer, which is an offensive style. Orf will pick it up and play early. Carriage on it now. He's coming in with Marinero. The attack behind the ball. Hector is tripped up by Jim Schwab, and the crunch will have a restart. Let's quickly go down to uh, Greg Mace. And Tommy Tanner hurt what's called his heel cord, and he came up with a lot of pain there. Kevin Ketters actually came over to the bench and said, are you okay? So it was incidental. He certainly didn't mean to run into him like that, but Tommy Tanner clearly hurting with a heel injury right now. Zoran Kerridge will put it back in play. A couple of fakes across it never made it to Gutierrez. And why not? Because of Jim Schwab, the Kansas City captain, once again coming up big defensively. Thumped in by Marinero, lofted in a battle with Gutierrez, and the ball squeaks off. How much of an, an emotional lift is it for Kansas City that Schwab is playing, Art, when we get a chance to well, get it back to Orb? It's huge, because he really keeps things in order. He's a very vocal leader out there. Really can scream at that, those forwards to get back and track back and double team. And Actually, Schwab is so vocal, he got a five-minute misconduct penalty in a game that he didn't even play in, which was game three. And the other thing, I think just from a team teammate standpoint, I mean, if I know a teammate of mine is hurting as badly as Schwab is and he's out there giving it all, it, I mean, how could you have an excuse not to play hard? Well, they certainly have done everything they have wanted to do here in the first half to hold Cleveland, which averages 17 points per game during the regular season, to only two points here in this building. It's been a great job. Brad Phillips from Old Dom, was a rookie of the year a few seasons back. Orf threw it off the back of Tashantra. They want to do that, Kansas City. Get in front of Orf and make it tough for Otto to outlet the ball quickly. Well, that's one way to do it. Get your body in front of Otto, and you saw Tashantra go up high. Otto was lucky that ball didn't deflect. Hanser to Dostoevsky. Well, that a guy that you don't really look for to score goals comes up with one here for Cleveland. Glenn Carbonera, as Wade got caught on the wrong side of the ball, and then the ball comes out to Carbonera. And Carbo with his first goal here in this playoff series for the left-footed defender. Todd Jasaski will pick up the assist. And the crunch back out in front. We've had a seesaw affair. Kansas City led one to nothing. The crunch out two to one, then KC three to two. And here's where we stand now. The crunch ahead by a point. Gutierrez neatly softened that. 
talked all half about what a great job Kansas City has done defensively, but give Cleveland credit as well. Gutierrez, the back kill. Miss Panzer. Dangerous play by Goran Hunyak. The restart over to Carbonara. Glenn moving in on Rogers, played across. Nobody was at the back stick. And Carmine will play it upfield. That ball there by Carbonara is better than the near post high off the glass because it eliminates any chance for the other team to counter you. Great ball. Here's a race. Haynes holds him off but couldn't get it down. The official catalog of the NPSL is the Eurosport catalog, the fabled soccer traders. All the latest and greatest in soccer attire, 1-800-447-0570 for your Eurosport catalog. Otto's PAA going down just a bit here early on, but so is Brett Phillips. I was going to say, both goalies <laughs> are going to go into the locker room at halftime and say, thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you for a half of soccer that we could take off a little bit. These two teams have averaged about 60 shots a game. Between the Baron and Arrow with a goal. Well, how he slipped that one in there, Ed, I don't know. But Hector Marinero finds ways to score goals. Watch again, the ball played forward, and Hauser draped all over Hector, but caught Phillips by surprise. As you don't want to leave Hector one-on-one, -on -one, and the double-team Haynes, you see there, never came. Otto Orff picked up the assist on that. On both of Marinero's goals, Orff has assisted, and Otto now with eight points in the playoffs. That's as many as, uh, well, Todd Dasoski just upped his point total to nine, but Hector Marinero with a new NPSL record, 36 goals. There it is. He started with 240 on the night arc. Give him four more points. 70 points ahead of his closest counterpart, Zoran Karic. Hector now with 82 points in 11 playoff games, so but just what about about eight job? points a game. How about Otto Orr? Yeah, a three-pointer, and what, what do you say? Was it six assists so far in this nine points for Otto? Uh, he's got four assists for the playoffs. Seven points for Otto in the uh, playoffs here. They're going to have to call him Otto Offense, double O. O for offense. Well, it looks like this game might go a little further than what Kansas City thought when they started out, went in the first two. Although that's uh, kind of pushing the things there. April 29th is game five, May 1st, game six, and if need be, game seven, May 12th. All on the deuce. Well, I felt all along, Ed, that this series is going seven games. And if Cleveland could equalize this series at two here tonight, there's a strong possibility that may happen. Well, I don't want to give the idea that, that Kansas City thought they had this wrapped up. That's, that's far from the case. Zoran Savic knows that uh, it's going to be a long battle before they can wrap up a title. And, you know, both teams very confident in their abilities to beat the other team. It's just a matter of who guts it out and who produces when it counts. Brian Haynes and Kevin Ketter's lining up here. They leave it for Haynes. It hit a leg on the way. Well, that well designed play. Redirected. Otto was going the wrong way. The Shantra hit the post. Let's see if he takes on Schwab. He's got help in two guys. Cut to an opening. Now to the D. Cut it back just wide. Well, you saw there. You called it. He took Schwab on. And Jimmy just a little slow to turn with that injured hamstring. And Hector had him beat. But just couldn't hit the target. There's how we got to this point. A big win for Kansas City in game one and they uh, gutted out a win in game two and the crunch come back to get game three see the three scores all of them in the 20s for the winner don't think they'll get there tonight marinero took it down played for it for 
and you mentioned Kansas City. Coach Savick really felt they didn't come out with the same intensity in game three that they did in games one and two. But certainly have held their ground so far in the first half. Alert play from Dragicevic into space. Marinero right side. One timer. Batted away by Phillips. Had that shot been about two feet higher, Ed, that would have been in. As you saw Phillips leave his feet early and go down and make the save. What an alert play from Dragicevic, too, after he made the play in his own third to spot the opening and dart up field. And Cleveland has Kansas City back on their heels a little bit right now here in this final minute. Wade trying to... Uh catch out of our and that was not a good decision by Wade exactly. because it's going to come all the way back down and Cleveland's going to have a restart good time to take a timeout if you're Bruce Miller as he's got two available first season in the NPSL and he's had a dandy Cleveland's restarts are pretty straightforward it's Hector and Zorin and whatever they see that's on they'll take it Marinero, he missed it wide. That was from three-point land. Zorn will try it again with time running out. Haynes dumps it, and there's the horn. We're at halftime. A total of nine points have been scored. And the crunch lead at six to three. Before we cut out, let's go down to Greg Mace. All right, with Bruce Miller, uh, clearly they're playing a lot better defense against you than they did in game three. Yeah, it's a lot different game. They're, uh, they're getting back and, and really tracking our guys back, and uh, we're maybe not moving quite as well as we did in the first game. So we've got to get in there at halftime and tell our guys to get moving a little better and make sure we stay with their extra man who they push forward. Uh, they've had a couple of chances. They could have, you know, it very well could be a 10-10 game right now. They missed a couple of easy ones, as, and so did we. So... Uh, you, you said uh, what they're one of the breaks that, that you were giving them far too many opportunities. Yeah, that's true. They, you know, they missed a couple of easy ones on the far post. Our third guy has got to track back with their third man. All right, Bruce, we're about to get the locker room. A lot different uh, approach here in, in game number four. The crunch with a 6-3 lead, Ed. All right, with a three-point lead, Cleveland will go to the lockers at half. We'll slip out and be back with halftime. Don't go away. It's halftime in Cleveland, game four of the NPSL Finals of the Crunch with a three-point lead over the attack, and we've seen some spectacular goals. The Crunch trailed it 1-0 late in the first quarter, and Hector Marinero working a little magic. The one touch, up we go, over and out, and bang, it's in the goal at two-point, and the Crunch takes a 2-1 lead. Kansas City was short-handed, and they were able to steal one as West Wade walked around the mark and banged in a left footer, putting Kansas City head momentarily, but the Crunch came back and took the lead. It, it's been a, a very close game and some spectacular goals, Art. Well, Kansas City's played pretty good defense, but two great goals by Marinero. Not a whole lot you're going to do when a guy makes some great individual efforts, but the four guys for Kansas City, Salgado, Lofton, and Jeff Rogers, the guys we saw in games one and two that did so well haven't come up offensively for Kansas City, and they need to step it up in the second half. Now, do you think this game it will open up in the second half, or is Orrin Savick going to stick with his game plan? Well, I look for Kansas City to keep it relatively low scoring. They won't take a lot of chances till the fourth quarter, but Cleveland would like to break this thing open here in the third. Now, we're going to go down to the floor, and Greg Mace, he's got the guy who went upside down. Greg? Hector, we've seen you do this before, but what goes through your mind when you make a great bicycle kick like that? Hey, you really don't think about it. It was just instinct, and, you know, the ball just popped up there perfect for me, and I had to give it a try, and luckily it went in. It did go in. Now, talk about what they've done to you defensively here in this game as it compared to game three, because they seem to have you bottled up a lot more. Yeah, they're trying to double team when I go down in the corner and stuff, but, you know, it's a tight defensive team, and, they, you know, they play great defense, so it's going to be tough to break through them. As Hector walk back, walks back to the bench, we'll take a break and be back for the second half. It's second half showtime here in Cleveland. The Crunch trying to even this series at two games apiece and go back to Kansas City for game five with an even slate. Kansas City trying to steal one on the road, and that hasn't ever happened in a playoff series between these two teams. A giveaway in front of the Kansas City goal in Phillips. Answers that call. Gutierrez took a dive and got the call. 
Gutierrez. Went one way, Marinero went the other. Well, Henry never even looked at Hector that time. Tried to play that one touch pass. Gutierrez more so than I think anybody in the league plays these no-look passes. And over in back, handball. We'll take a break and be back. Third quarter, the crunch ahead. At Pacific and Art Kramer back in Cleveland, it's game four of the 96 NPSL Finals. Cleveland trying to even the series. Here comes Chris Hanser. Off of his line was Brett Phillips. Neat touch by Hunyak. And we've got a player hurt behind the play as Chris Hanser went into that corner hard with Brett Phillips. Hands are 6'2", 190 pounds. Watch it here. Hands are trying to use his pace going down the left side. And Phillips came out. They've gotten a piece of Hanser. Hanser in his first season had 46 points for the crunch in 25 games. We talked about the need for he and Tosaski to come up big offensively. And in game three, they both did that. Tosaski with a goal and an assist. And Hanser with two assists. Marinero will have the restart attempt way beyond the yellow line. They'll strike it into Limniatis. Those two are teammates on the Canadian national team. Into the corner. Gutierrez across, and Miller was coming more directly to the ball than to the far post. Foul called against Miller. He stepped in on Limniatis. Well, the crowd felt there should have been a foul to play before, but it was a good no call because Cleveland had the advantage going forward. They just failed to connect on their one-two. There's Wade, he scores a three-pointer, I do believe, unless it was deflected. And I believe Salgado in front, positioned perfectly, deflected that ball by Orr. And Mike Kennedy, the referee, signaling it is a two-pointer. But Wade just crossing over to the middle. Look at Salgado positioned in front. And a little deflection off Salgado's left leg. And then Dragicevic, the Cleveland defender. I believe that ball deflected off him in, as well. And Kansas City right back in and at it 6-5. For Wes Wade, his third point of the game. Eloy Salgado uh, picks up his third playoff two-pointer and that's one of the four guys Salgado that we mentioned at halftime along with Lofton Rogers and Farrell that really stepped up in games one and two and provided 11 goals in those first two games and Salgado acquired from Chicago just before the trading deadline is paying off for coach Savick here in the finals so the two-point goal has the attack within a point at six to five Foul called in the crunch attack third, and that'll give Cleveland a restart chance. Zoran Karic, we're seeing him play more shifts than he has the entire playoffs. Zoran Savic making sure the defense is where matched he wants up. it. <laughs> Let's get matched up. Schweitzer in front, kicked out by Phillips. Great work by Westway. The Shantrit. Got behind the defense. Dragicevic nipped in, got a piece of it, won the ball. He can't get it past Haynes, and a foul called against Kansas City. And you see Dragicevic saying, what'd you do that for? And Lee's saying, well, you're giving me the old elbow in the corner, but to Shantret is one that's always going to dish it out and make sure the defender knows he's there and knows he came to play. Ball uh, will be over and back. For all the latest to the NBA as they head toward their playoff round, tune in to the Deuce at Midnight, Tuesday through Saturday, the NBA tonight on the Deuce. Marinero chips in front, Phillips ran oh. over Tom Tanner, and the crowd looking for a call, they won't get it, Schweitzer will not beat Phillips to the ball. Rogers on his bike. Will collect with Tima over to shut him down, and Tima call for the foul. And let's look again at the restart as Hector plays the ball in the box, and let's see if Phillips comes. A little bit of a two-hander to the back. One more time, Haynes with the flick, and you can't see the push. 
but you see Tanner flying forward. Out of Orful now, face a restart. Down on his end of the floor. Schwab and Wade, they're discussing. They'll leave it for Wes. Across, Rogers scores! From West Wade, a restart goal. Rogers on the board. Kansas City ahead, 7-6. to six. Well, that's what Rogers does best is try to create space for himself by moving into the open positions. And he Schwab with a little run over the ball. And Wade finds Rogers in front. And Otto was screened by team ahead. Virtually no chance. Well, I know that makes Jeff Rogers a happy boy. He had a couple of opportunities in the first half and was shaking his dreadlocks a bit. But he's on the board and puts Kansas City ahead for the first time since they were up 3-2. to two. Marinero with a long one. Carriage back to Marinero. He just hit it. Here comes Carriage. This wide and in the last touch, Tanner and out. Well, Kansas City caught a break right there because Marrow took the initial shot from just over midfield, and then the Kansas City forwards let him run right through uncontested, and you don't see Hector miss shots from the top of the D with no one on him very often. At very least, that he hits the target with that shot. Trigisevic will play long. That's going to be a three-line pass. Here's Jeff Rogers moving to open space. Well, the key to this is the timing. Watch the timing. Fakes back post, freezes team a little bit, but perfect timing. A lot of players like to just stand in the box, but the key there was Jeff timed his run. And a great pass by Wade. 31-year-old in his seventh season from Tucson, Arizona, Jeff Rogers. They don't come much better working off the ball than Jeff Rogers. Salgado, nice ball. I think that was Todd Desoski just steamrolled a Kansas City attack player. Well, if Phillips got away with one, then certainly Desoski got away with one there as well. Salgado with just a piece. And the crowd's starting to become impatient here, Ed. They want to see Cleveland. One yet in traffic. Schweitzer got it back to Orr. Just over five minutes to play in the third quarter. Kansas City led 3-2 at one point. They then trailed 6-3. Now back out front by a point. Goals by Salgado and Rodgers. And really the first two goals Kansas City has scored at even strength. They got a power play goal and a shorthanded goal in the first half. There really are no moral victories with these two teams in the finals. Both teams' goals at the beginning of the season was to win the championship. Anything short would be considered a failure. Here comes Eddie Carmine, the numbers for Kansas City. Tanner backtracked, got it out. Carmine got back into the play. We talked about each team winning at home. Kansas City has the home field advantage in this series, so Cleveland needs this victory to make the job a little bit easier. It's not gonna be easy to start. Bunyak in for Wade. The give and go. Pass a little behind. Scoring Gorin. And Wade will just possess. Nice first touch. Hauser ripped it. The rebound for Pichanko. Softened that nicely. They're all banging around like crazy. Kansas City has really controlled the pace here in the third quarter. Look at the touches from the attack. Tanner back track and won the ball. Wow, one miscommunication yes. there. Wade will wait. Back heel team up. Got into the play and those to go to the corner. A foul called against Nate Hauser. We'll take a break. The attack lead it in the third, seven to six. We're back for the third quarter, a 7-6 lead for Kansas City. Rodgers has the goal and the ball that put the attack ahead. He's going to be called for a foul against the team, I do believe. <laughs> well, Rodgers got that arm up, and now we're going to have a delay of game warning against Kansas City. Kansas City has been very sharp in the third quarter. 
in this series. And once again, they've outscored the Crunch 4-0 here to continue that dominance. This series will go back to Kansas City for Game 5, Kemper Arena. You'll see it on the deuce April 29th, 1.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.30 on the left coast. And who knows what that series will be when it heads back to Game 5. Kansas City could be up 3-1. And, and West be Wade down behind the play. Now he's getting up slowly. Three on two for the crunch. Todd Dostoski missed, hit it from Karras. Followed up wide. Marinero scores! Kansas City upset that play wasn't stopped because Wade was down behind the play. And you see right there, they're in Mike Kennedy's ear telling them that Wade was down, but it's three on two for Cleveland. Kansas City fails to clear, and then who else? Hector Marinero. Once again, a hat trick for Marinero. Six points for Hector. He had 21 hats during the regular season. 247 points. He's got eight hat tricks in 12 playoff games. That is a whole lot of goals. The crunch back out in front now, eight to seven. And I was going to say, Ed Dasowski may have buried that first shot, but the ball hit a seam in the carpet and bounced up on him. Well, for his efforts, he picked up his second assist of the night. The third lead of the night for the crunch. Outlet. Carmine's going to have to hurry up. Marinero on his way to goal. He missed wide. Oh, well, Eddie Carmine in Kansas City was fortunate there. Good tackle from Schwab. Carriage carries on. There's an opening look out here for KC. Carriage chipped it up over the bar. He gets it back, tees it up over the bar again. Well, those are the first shots we've seen Zoran hit with his right foot in probably four games. Or plays for Desaski. A bouncing ball. Cut it back. The back heel tee. The stop oh, by Phillips. Phillips cut down the angle perfectly to Rob Tima. The crowd getting in as Zorn gets in. Well, Z tries the little touch chip first. Hector with a diving header. Couldn't get there at the back post. Dangerous restart for Cleveland. Carriage looking for his first point tonight. Faces a two-man wall. Wait, shoots. He missed near side and he missed Dasaski as well. Casey okay. tries to play out there. They jump on a bad ball, but Cleveland fortunate to come out with the ball. Zorn is moving like there's no pain in that knee. Marinero turns at the D and it's blocked by Schwab. Five blue jerseys once again in their own box. Marinero wins the ball. Crunch still looking for their first restart goal of the game. Here's Carrot on his way to goal. He tried to back heel, but Phillips was wise to that. Well, Lofton getting caught on the wrong side of the ball that time. Almost let Carrot walk in alone. We're winded down in the third quarter to Shantret. Turns to face to step over, slid it in. Hunyak. Oh, he can't get past Rikisovic. Here come the crunch. Doug Miller against Westway. Played Gutierrez. Henry against Schwab. The head fake. Schwab pushes him off. Won the war. Well, two against four that time. Cleveland was trying to attack, and numbers were not in their favor. Kansas City looking for an over and back. It will not be called. Otto will go long. Gutierrez played it back for Miller. He moves it against Hauser. Double team help from Wade. And Rodgers will play it in. Red Phillips will put it down on the floor as the clock ticks away for the third quarter. Kansas City tries to create something. Gutierrez ahead with three seconds on the clock. Where's the horn or the whistle first? Tom Landy saying, there's the whistle. Another hat trick for Hector Marinero. He has his guys out front after three quarters. A one point lead for the crunch. We'll be back for the fourth. There you see some of tonight's 8,100 here in Cleveland. 
for game four of the NPSL Finals. The Crunch needing a win to stay alive. We'll head to the fourth quarter. And the Crunch not looking good according to the numbers. Kansas City has been stronger in the fourth quarter. That final one, 18 points to the Crunch's six in the fourth quarter during this series. Let's hit the floor and see what Greg Mays has for us, Greg. Well, I've never seen Bruce Miller so upset with his team. He says they are not playing together as a team on the restarts, and they are not getting back on defense. I don't know whether he was really upset or he was trying to fire his team up, but he's clearly very concerned as we go into this fourth quarter that they're not playing together as a team. We'll see what happens. Andy Schmetzer, the guy in the blue shirt, in between all of the white shirts, Metzer, as I told you, with a cheek injury. Bruce Miller behind him. And Ed, Bruce Miller has really changed in this final series. We didn't see him do a whole lot during the regular season as far as talking to players and getting in their face, but he has been really active in this series. You saw a foul against Zoran Karic. I believe it was Wes Wade who laid a body into Karic to prevent that give and go from being completed. If you get a chance, enough, got another fourth quarter statistic for you that will make Kansas City attack fans very happy. Punch still looking for their first restart goal. Here's Dragice, and shot it wide. Tanner tries again in traffic. Phillips can't control it, but swept it out. And a foul called against Wes Wade. Tanner looking at Wes, what are you doing to me? There's the crunch when they lead after three. And that's one loss came in this series to Kansas City as Cleveland led 15-14 in game two, but Kansas City went on to win that one. The chip to the near side is behind Marinero. It's up and out. Kansas City has really been the team in the fourth quarter in the playoffs in 96. They've outscored their opponent 42-26. to 26. That's a plus 16. And Cleveland, on the other hand, a minus five has been outscored 38-33. This is right where Kansas City wants to be in this game. Trailing by one. Marinero played the boards. Phillips. And Brett didn't see that shot. It almost snuck in the near post. A race to Shantrett and Schweitzer. Shantrett got a foot on it, almost scored. Haynes tries to go upside down. That was blocked by Dragicevic. Oscar has had another great game for the crunch. Carrots tried to play the Cowboy. That missed. It was broken up. Here comes KC. Two on two. Brian Haynes will go one on two now. Oh, he got through that, but lost the ball. Trouble for the crunch. Wob won it. Poked it in. Schweitzer took it off the chest. Rogers stepped in. Haynes turns. Orf with the stop. And some more action in front of the crunch goal. A lot of bodies hit the range. Schwab knocked it in the seat. Well, Otto with a couple key saves there. There were chances all over the place. As you first, see the first one, Haynes with all kinds of time makes a quick turn. Otto comes up with a big save there. He's got 11 on the night. But add the pressure solely on Cleveland here, trailing two games to one. They lose this one. There may not be a game six back here in Cleveland. Kansas City was 17-3 and three at home during the regular season. Doug Miller tried out as a handball, and indeed it will be a shootout and a power play for the crunch. Brett Phillips doesn't like it, but it appeared obvious from up here. Well, we've seen Warren Westcote, the other Kansas City keeper, in a mop-up role in game three, but he's going to come on in an important situation now as you see, way out of the box there. Good call by Mike Kennedy and Tom Landy. Hector was one of three on the shootout in game three. He will face Westcote here. He scores! The fourth goal of the game for Hector Merrill. The crunch lead by two. <laughs> did you see his face, Art? Yeah, well, <laughs> did that ball hit both posts before it went in? I'd like to take another look, but Westcote got his arm up. That ball looked like it hit the inside of the one post and then went over to the other side. I couldn't tell if it nicked off both posts. Let's take another look. Hector, the one touch and then the shot. You see Wesco get a hand on it. Oh, That's double it post, <laughs> side pocket for Hector Marinero. Watch Got his reaction. He said, I called that shot. 
The crunch on the power play now. That shootout goal worth the point. Look out. Wade has a shorthanded goal in this game. In the corner, Gutierrez is about to fall across. It missed everybody. Well, 9-7 Cleveland up. This would be a big point if they could capitalize on their power play. They did four times in game three. Four power play goals. Gutierrez. Carriage. Arch told you many times how patient the crunch is with a man up. Their ball possession skills, second to none. Orff will come up and collect. And what's doubly hard for Westcote is he hasn't had any warm-up time, and now he's got to come in and face this potent Cleveland power play. Marinero sloppy with the ball. And oh, Wade almost had a one on the goalie. Here comes the crunch. Carriage across! can't mark him any tighter than Limyitis had at the far post, but Miller just snuck in there with his head with a beautiful power play goal. Let's take another look. Hector starts to play with a nice chip in the corner, and then Z-Man just spots Miller, and he just got it in underneath the bar as the post in that sequence was very good. As you saw, Hector hit both of them on the shootout, and now Miller gets the crossbar. Soren Carriage's first point of the night on that assist. Marinero very alertly saw Wade was not in the play defensively. Played early. Gutierrez kicked out by Phillips, who comes out of the penalty box after that power play goal. So he's back in the fray, and Westcote will get back to the bench. This is Brian Lofton. He's got 24 points in the playoffs, 12 of them in game one. Let's take another look from behind the net at Hector's shootout goal. As Westcote, I believe, got that. That was never touched. Just a beautiful shot by Marinero. I think he needed to hit the crossbar for an extra point there. The restart. Lost it. Shot it wide. Weighed a couple of assists tonight. The crunch with their matching their biggest lead at three points, 10 to 7. Marinero, four goals. This is a time when Cleveland's forwards really need to play good team defense. And don't try to anticipate and get the two-on-one break going the other way, but make sure that they get five behind the ball and make Kansas City beat them from the outside. Schwab stepped in. Early ball. Miller two-on-one. All oh, the passes too far in front. Carbonara almost overran the ball. Crunch gave away one there. Exactly. If Cleveland doesn't win this game, they can well look back at that opportunity, a 2 on 0 with Miller and Gutierrez at 11 and a half minutes left. Here comes Team Gutierrez score! Now Kansas City may have to take a T.O. here as Cleveland is breaking it open here in the fourth. Well, the Crunch got another chance at it, Art. Well, here's the first opportunity that they missed as Miller, a little bit too much weight on that pass for Gutierrez, but Tima sets up Cleveland. And just too much space for Cleveland to work. It's a six-point run for the Crunch. They have opened up a five-point lead. And right now, the Crunch turning around those fourth-quarter statistics that we told you about. Gutierrez had a 10-point game in game three. That's his first points of game four. Give Gutierrez 41 points in the playoffs. Our told you he only had seven points in six games last season when he was the rookie of the year during the regular season. Those seven points, uh, Hauser hit it over the crossbar. Those seven points were in the playoffs. Marinero, here's where the crunch Worked so well. Hector scores! Well, Ed, we mentioned that Kansas City should probably take a timeout. I believe they may be waited one goal too many as the momentum is all Cleveland right now. 
And once again, Hector the Great, Marinero with his fourth goal of the evening. Actually, make that five for Hector. A total of nine points. He had 10 points in game three. 19 points in the last two games. His 27th two-point goal, he has tied another NPSL record. The name of Marinero can be found at the top of just about every offensive record in the NPSL scorebook. Well, Zoran Savic is really showing me something here, Eddie. He really believed that they could win their home game because hasn't even taken a timeout on this big run by Cleveland. Little surprise that they didn't try to stop this momentum, but Savic is just going to sit back and watch this game develop into what it's going to be. You know, the, the crunch is on a run here, but this is only a seven-point game, and there's still ten minutes left here. You know, the way the crowd is going nuts and the run that the crunch has been on here, they scored the last four goals in a span of just under three minutes. Last five goals. And now Cleveland, you see Miller and Gutierrez running forward, two against four. Gutierrez tried to poke it in and hit on the attack. This is the time for Cleveland to really keep possession of the ball. Step over move and Tanner got in front to obstruct. By running up and down the field, you're only going to allow Kansas City chances to score. Schwab in front, loose ball. Wade, look to get it home. Carmine across for Schwab. Schwab, a St. Louis native, a St. Louisan. The chance had fouled in the corner. Tanner looks on. 8 0 run in the last five minutes, five seconds. It was 6 5 Cleveland at one point. This by far is the biggest lead of the game at seven points. Crunch led. Look at the bull move by Schwab. Get out of my way. Otto found an opening, neatly taken down by Schweitzer, but giving the ball away just way too easily with a seven-point lead. Tima banged it off a teammate and came out of there. Tima will then loop it. Marinero and Limniatis go at it. John Limniatis kicks it out, and we'll take a break. Marinero on another big night. We'll be back. And Vicinic and Art Kramer back. The Crunch with a restart chance. They are 0 for 14 on restarts in game four. Zoran tried to get it in. Trakisevich deflected over the crossbar. Wade will get it out of trouble momentarily. Carriage backtracking in a double team there. Played in the hands and that hit him hard and came right back on the foot of Carriage. Right foot from Orr. Wade went high. Hanser didn't react to the ball quickly enough. That's a couple of times tonight that Wade has tried to beat Hanser to the ball and hasn't been that fortunate in doing it. Lauren Carriage. Well, that's a good sign for the crunches. If he's played a full game and is able to carry on, Zoran playing just on restarts didn't score a point against Baltimore in the Baltimore series and that was the first time ever for Carriage that he didn't score in an NPSL game a run of 130 some games and I'm a little surprised though Ed that they continue to play Carriage when they have these leads That's a good point take a look at the final scoring average per game both teams way up there but tonight a little bit lower scoring told you, told you at the outset that 15 would probably win this game and cleveland knocking on the door here with 14. schwab will restart chips it here comes Ketters kicked out by dragisevich stepped in and fouled Schwab. You know, another interesting stat for me, Art, is this is the 18th time that these two teams have played in their history, and there's only a three-point difference 
combined out of all of those games coming into tonight, Kansas City has scored 282, the Crunch 279. That's over a 17-game span. Well, not too much of a surprise. Both teams possess many players with a lot of skill, and you know they'll create chances. In front, Rodgers trying to nip away. Schweitzer. Look at Tim Schwab is just hobbling. Just playing on guts and heart. Carriage. And a double team. They didn't clamp it down and he played back for the Eastman. Oscar was an all-star back in 1981 with the I think that 91 with the Detroit Rockers. The top scoring defenseman in the league that year. Ball possession from the front. Hector was looking for an over and back. And finally, finally the ball finally rolled over. <laughs> smile on Marinero's face. Well, they can afford to smile now with that seven-point lead. A little bit of debris on the floor that Marinero cleaning up. Brett Phillips making sure the wall is where he wants it. it looks like there's still a little bit too much room for Hector. He can bend that ball. And that's CFP what he just took it. a look at. Yep. And Phillips is going to check it one more time. I think that man on the end of the wall needs to step about a half step to his left. That's Brian Lawton. There, and there he they go. go. Carbonara played it off the boards. Orphan erase Marinero will get there before Lofton and dump it in diagonally. A pair of eights after it. And the Yadis, first guy there. Limiaitis and Carmine do such similar jobs, it's hard to tell them apart yep. back there in the KC defense. They, they look very similar as well. And they both play so steady. Marinero got knocked down by Lofton, a foul is called. The yeah, will have. Definitely a push on Lofton, and he shakes his head in agreement. And look out here if you're Kansas City. And they actually gave Cleveland a break by pulling that ball off the boards a little bit. Crunch still has not scored on a restart tonight. And you see where Kansas City believes the foul occurred, but oh no, this is trouble for Kansas City. What button will Carriage push this He likes to play the little toe poke. He likes to play a little toe poke or two. Right to the... Out high, Fugisevich slapped down by Phillips. Crunch lead this game by seven. They're still on an 8-0 run. Oh, great ball moving in. Well, give a few players credit here. One, Henry Gutierrez for being strong in the corner, but two, Hector Marinero with a beautiful one-touch pass. Watch again, Hector with the one-touch pass, and then the Z-man through the five-hole. A 10-0 run for the crunch. Carriage with three points. There's the score. Here's what we got coming up. Game five, April 29th from Kansas City. It will go at least six games. Will it go seven? Well, the history of these two teams says yes, it will. Well, you see a much more relieved Cleveland bench than they were at halftime. That was a three-point goal. Really, Ed, I think Zoran Savic showed us that he is very confident of his team's chances of winning at home when he didn't take a timeout in the fourth. Well, you know, a little bit of a flip-flop here. The Crunch got out to a 12-0 lead at the beginning of Game 3. Now they're on a 13-point run at the end of Game 4. It was Kansas City who had the big 13-point run in Game 1. Nice move by Brian Haynes in a pressure situation. Salgado! Kicked out by Orff. He was going the wrong way, but got his legs there. Eloy had two choices there, side-footed it to Otto's left or play it to Rogers, and he shot it right down the middle. Armin's three-pointer popped up and out. Once again, if you want to look real good on the soccer floor, all the best. The official catalog of the NPSL, Eurosport.
Carmine in front. Locked up and out. You know, that side, that side moments ago. Phone number for Eurosport, 1-800-447-0570. Uh, Hauser looking for a tip in at the back stick. Couldn't get enough of it. And then let's talk a little bit about what we might see in game five as Cleveland has is going to equalize this series at two apiece. But I think Cleveland may take a little bit different approach than they went into Kansas City initially at the start of this series trying to run and gun with Kansas City. I think you'll see Cleveland probably play a little bit more defensive and try to hold the ball and make it more of a game that was played at this pace we saw here tonight. See, now that says a lot to me, Art, because and there is uh, the Game 5 coverage on April 29th because the Crunch really has never been a team to change their tactics. You know what I'm saying? They're a, a team that wants to get out and score, and Kansas City might be forcing them into a situation where they're going to have to alter their tactics a bit. Well, Cleveland's going to have to make the field smaller. Kemper Arena is a lot bigger than the Convocation Center. Cleveland's going to have to get behind the ball quickly. We talked about Kansas City need, needing to get into transition from offense to defense. That's what Cleveland's going to need to do in Kansas City is get back quickly in transition. First three games, second half scoring, it was all Kansas City. Now 11-0 run for the crunch. The attack has not scored a point here in a while. It's been a 13-0 run for the crunch. Jeff Rogers' goal was the last one they scored. Carriage against Look out. Wade. Tim Tima backs it out. Tima showing a yeah. lot of class. The crowd wanted Tima to finish that one, but Tima... Look at Zorn's not happy about it. But I think Tima showed the class move there by not finishing that one off. Well, we want to make sure we're right on this. Tonight, Kansas City has scored four times in the second half. I thought that was something <laughs> a little fishy. 13-4 here tonight in the uh, second half. Well, we've seen these two teams pretty much use the last minute to shake hands in the first three games. Let's see what happens here this evening if they play this last minute and 11 all the way out. Are they do the traditional handshake with time still left on the clock. Salgado off of Lofton, so the attack will get a goal. Eloy with his third point of night. Brian Lofton gets on the score sheet, giving him 26 points. Salgado had a two-pointer early on. Here's a look. Well, Eloy just using that one-on-one -on -one ability in the box, and oh, he's gonna get the goal, I think. Gets credit for yeah. the goal as that shot deflected off Carbonera. So two goals for Eloy Salgado. He had 86 points during the regular season. Started the year with Milwaukee. Was traded to Chicago and wound up here in Kansas City. Less than a minute to play and the crunch will even up this series at two games apiece. Well, if everybody holds their serve into a game seven as Dasaski knocks it down, Kansas City's going to be at home, but you never know what could happen in a game seven, and that's the scary part for the team with the home field advantage. Well, Cleveland is ecstatic to be back at two games apiece because they were feeling pretty low after going down 2-0. Uh, at the top of the broadcast, we told you how Kansas City was able to come back after being blown out in the playoffs. That wasn't the storyline this evening. Another handshake opportunity before the game is over as the Cleveland Crunch win this one by 10 points to even the series at two games apiece. It'll go back to Kemper 
For Greg Mace and Art Kramer, I'm Ed Vicinic saying so long from Cleveland. We'll see you in KC.